Ladies and gentlemen, may I present... Chat Chili, you've got questions, I've got biochemistry. So uh, I have a question, and this is going to take probably a couple parts. But Sam writes me and says, Chad, I want to get super shredded. How do I do it without losing my muscle? Well, here's the thing. Before we can even begin talking about how you're going to do it, you need to understand some of the, it's the science behind fat loss, fat gain, how your body works whenever you consume food, uh, how your body works when you're not consuming food. So really quickly today, I'm going to go through some basic, uh, very general, this is not meant to be comprehensive or, uh, or super in-depth, just some basic concepts behind basically how nutrition works, biochemistry, things like that, how our body functions. So the first thing I want to talk about, and they, I made teeter-totters for you guys to make it all very simple, uh, basically when one side goes up, the other side goes down. It's that simple, right? So over here I have insulin and HSL. That's the first one I'm going to talk about really quickly. Um, HSL is hormone sensitive lipase. Lipase, um, coming from the root word lipo, that would be fat, so lipase, it's an enzyme that breaks down fat. You want to have a lot of HSL activity in your body if you want to burn fat. So the more active HSL is, the higher the levels, the more fat you're pulling out of your, your stores and using for energy. Well. Whenever insulin levels are low, uh, you're, you're, you're able to burn more fat, you're able to access more fat. And whenever insulin levels are high, HSL kind of comes to a halt. And you're really not going to be burning much fat at all. Whenever you eat something, the normal insulin spike for a healthy person usually lasts about two to three hours. So if you think about that, if you eat something for two to three hours, your fat burning, especially if you eat something that's high in carbohydrates, let me throw that out there. If you eat something that raises your insulin, for two to three hours, your body's going to be in a kind of a storage state rather than a releasing state. Um, this is why you can, you can extend this by consuming protein, which um, is where we're headed next to insulin and glucagon. Um, basically, as simple as I can make this, again, it's uh, storage versus release. So whenever you eat something like protein that doesn't cause this insulin level to go up, um, your glucagon goes up. And what that tells your body to do is to release more energy. And of course, that's going to allow HSL to stay high because if insulin's down, HSL's there. So now you're releasing more energy, you're burning more fat. If you eat something that spikes your insulin, and that's, this can even be protein because eggs, cheese, foods that are high in leucine, um, those will spike your insulin as well. So I don't want you to just think, oh, well, protein's completely safe. Fat is completely safe. If you just want to go eat some pure fat, like you want to have a spoonful of coconut oil or something like that, it has no effect on the teeter-totter at all. Um, so what we have here, though, is that if you eat a meal with carbohydrates, this insulin level goes up, your body goes into storage mode, Okay, and that can be storing muscle, by the way. I don't want to knock insulin at all. You know, lots of people think, oh, insulin's bad for you because that's how you store fat. Yeah, that's true, but insulin's also extremely anabolic. It helps you store protein and build more muscle. It's also anti-catabolic because it blocks the action of cortisol, which is something that breaks down your muscle. Um, over here, continuing forward on our science, we have ghrelin and leptin, and these guys are fun. Um, ghrelin was only re discovered recently, uh, and, and even more recently, the way we suddenly start understanding how it works. But basically, I'm going to make this as simple as possible. Hunger and satiety. So when leptin is high, you feel satiated, and whenever ghrelin is high, you feel hungry. The catch is that some people can actually lose their leptin sensitivity. They can have something called leptin resistance. And so they eat and eat and eat, and the signal from the leptin never really gets their brain to realize, oh, I'm full. And so they just keep eating and eating and eating. Um, in any case, though, in a normal healthy person, what should happen is when you eat, ghrelin goes down, leptin goes up, and whenever you haven't eaten, your leptin level will start to drop, and your ghrelin level will go up. And this is why also, if you look at people as they, they drop body fat, the lower your body fat percentage gets, the less leptin you have, which is why when you're down at like 4 and 5% body fat, even if you know that you're eating an adequate number of calories, you're still going to feel 
hungry because your leptin level is low and so you're not satiated and so your ghrelin level climbs up and it's basically your, your body wants to store fat. Your body wants to have as much fat as possible because uh, to your body having fat is like having money in the bank. So just in case you might starve one day, we've got a whole bunch of it saved up. The last thing I want to touch on really quickly in this video here is about LPL. This is lipoprotein lipase. Again, it's another lipase, and so it, it's an enzyme for fats. But here's the thing. What shifts this teeter-totter here okay, is actually insulin. So in the presence of insulin, LPL pulls fat into the cells. Whenever insulin is not present, HSL is more active, and LPL is actually pulling fat out of the cells. Think of it just as a transporter. That's the easiest way to just kind of visualize this concept. Now, I realize that's probably oversimplified for those of you out there who uh, you know, have medical degrees and things like that. You're looking at this and be like, well, that's way too simple. But it's an easy way to visualize it and an easy way to understand what's going on inside your body. So as I said, this is the first installment uh, of the how to get shredded for Sam method. Um, so that's all I got for you guys today. What's the matter with you people? I was joking! Don't you know a joke when you hear one? <laughs>